Hi everybody, my name is Carmen Shank and welcome to my small house. <laughs> Xavier and I went tiny in the fall of 2014. We moved into uh, a tiny house of 125 square feet. We purchased it with cash after we closed our restaurant and we moved in and we lived there for, I don't know, three years, give or take uh, a little bit. And um, it allowed us to hit the reset button on our lives. So we really took a huge step back in terms of our commitments. And um, it was really wonderful. We both really loved tiny house living. And the funny thing was is we both expected it to be temporary. But as it went on, I think we both realized how much we enjoyed it and how much we enjoyed being so intimately connected. The space was intimate and it uh, it forced us to be more connected than we had ever been. And that was a really nice perk for tiny house living. And then our business took a, a shift. We took on a big contract that required a larger working space. At that point, we didn't have a workshop and now we do. So this became our workshop. We rented this space um, and it's a little house that's um, 660 square feet. There's a garage out back. What is the living room of the little house became our piano workshop and Xavier restored a piano actually right here where I'm standing before the wall turned purple. <laughs> and then out there in the garage uh, is his new pipe organ workshop. And one bedroom was my office, and then the other bedroom we just recently converted into his office. So it's all kind of in flux. There's a lot of chaos here right now, but we're in the process of making this kind of ordinary, a little bit ugly old house. <laughs> it's, it feels a little disrespectful to say that in the house, but uh, we bought the house from a gentleman who had rented this house out for quite a few years. And uh, at the time when we came back here, um, he said he thought maybe somebody had been cooking meth in the bathroom. <laughs> so let's just say this poor house has really been through it. And so it's, um, it's time to respect what's been here, the, the house that was built on a good foundation, and bring it back from being a kind of sad, abused rental and make it a home again. And one of the things that really amuse me, amuses me about the tiny house marketplace is that people are buying these small houses, these tiny houses that cost really big bucks, but they are really special because A, they're brand new, and B, <laughs> you can put them anywhere. Um, never mind the fact that putting them anywhere uh, is has some, uh, challenges depending on legalities and how much it costs to actually move the thing. So we have in this country lots of small houses like this one. We're ignoring the small houses that already exist in favor of building small houses on wheels because they fit the trend and the small houses don't. Well, I'd like to take back that place. I'd like to go out there and just grab up all the little teeny houses that already exist and make them beautiful. And let's rearrange our thinking about what is tiny and what is small and what is fun and what is trendy and what is not. Let's make these small intimate spaces really beautiful again, because you can have great design in a small house. You can have really great features and great personality in a house on a foundation. <laughs> And all those great things that we learned about how to um, how to store clothes and how to store this and that and the other thing in a tiny house. Well, let's take what we've learned in those small intimate spaces and make this small house into another small intimate space. And I think perhaps the best part of all in this for me is that the whole time that we went tiny, we had instruments in storage. Um, I've got this amazing piano that my husband gave me as a gift one year for Christmas. And it's an amazing thing. And it's been in storage all of this time and it's time to get it back out. Um, like I said earlier, we never intended to live tiny forever. <laughs> it was not 
something we did thinking, oh, we're gonna go tiny for good. No, we went tiny as a means to an end, and that the end was we were gonna build a house, and the house was gonna be 1,200 square feet. That was my dream house. I had designed this gorgeous 1,200 square feet, foot mansion for us, and um, living tiny at 125 square feet began to really change the vision for us. And we loved the freedom that it gave us so much that all of those dreams we had of going back to a normal house really began to change. So here we are, <laughs> this awkward position. We're not exactly living in the tiny house anymore. We are living in, a, in this space, which is 660, like I've said four times now. And quite literally at the moment, we don't have a bedroom or a closet. So <laughs> we are totally making this up as we go along. But in the end, when we're finished with this home and the property here, I really believe it's gonna be a beautiful home. And it's not going to be a detriment that it's only it, that it's such that it's such a small home. It's entirely possible to make this place really beautiful, even if it is small. And I think the tiny house movement has brought us the opportunity to view small houses as nothing short of an opportunity. And the fact that they don't have wheels under them, well, maybe that's okay. Maybe we can embrace community in a whole new way. So um, come along for. <laughs> this vlog, I intend to show you every step of making this small house an intimate, funky, interesting, sexy, small, intimate space. Um, I think we both went through a period of grieving after we moved out of our tiny house and gave it to our friend. And so here's our opportunity to make this place a home the way our tiny house was a home. So um, stick around. I'm sure I'll be talking about all kinds of things that matter. I'm also starting a podcast, so every now and then you'll see hints of that. Um, I'm working on a book. I've got a number of projects in the works. I'm also helping out a friend right now, um, and that's taken about a month and a half um, here at the beginning of the year, but anything can happen <laughs> in this space and it probably will. So, um, by the way, my husband is a pipe organ builder and restores pianos, so when I say stay tuned at the end of an episode, it's because those words mean something different to me than, than you would think in a radio sense or a television sense. Stay tuned, you know? Keep your instrument at peak performance and embrace what it means to be in tune so stay tuned <laughs> i'm carmen shank and this is number one in the new series of a of a vlog i think i'm saying that right it's a video blog i used to be a blogger but uh, <laughs> i think the video thing will will suit me better so thank you so much for watching me ramble on for eight and a half minutes <laughs> <laughs> and stick around, stay tuned for more of the transformation of this small house. Thanks for watching.